Our global appetite for fish is increasing at such a rate that some experts predict that within 50 years, there could be a total collapse of all the fisheries that we currently rely on. And even though roughly a third of the seafood we eat is farmed, the majority of aquaculture takes place inland or in shallow coastal waters, often polluting local ecosystems with herbicides, antibiotics and fish waste. I'm Russell Beard and I've come to Mexico's Baja Peninsula to meet a marine engineer who hopes to herald an environmentally friendly future for fish farming. Ahoy. Hola, hola. Hola. I'm Pablo, nice to meet you. Hi Russell. Steve. We're heading across the bay to the north um, to a place called San Juan de la Costa. Uh, that's where the farm is. After years of working as an environmental compliance officer at a shallow water fish farm in the USA, Steve Page had a crisis of conscience. Back in 2003, I was uh, working at a salmon farm. But when I saw how much organic matter was on the bottom of the ocean, and just piled very really? deep, I realized that that was not a sustainable model. Either I was going to get out of aquaculture or I was going to f find out a more sustainable way to do it. And to me, the only way to do that was to go offshore. Deep water, stronger currents, and more, more spread out. There, there, there. there it comes. There is. I thought I saw something beneath the surface there. It, is. it looks like something out of a Jules Verne <laughs> science fiction novel. <laughs> Ready? Submerged deep below the surface when in operation and anchored well offshore, these giant structures known as aquapods can reach up to 20 meters in diameter and house up to 70,000 fish. They're built to withstand storms and damage from predators like sharks and seals, reducing the risk of fish escaping when upsetting local ecosystems. Their spherical shape gives the illusion of endless space. Like most farms, the livestock need to be fed, but the benefit of this deep water operation is that any uneaten food and fish waste is dissipated by strong ocean currents. Total madman. <laughs> it's bonkers. Is this the future of fish farming? I think so. Yeah, this truly. Is, this is where it's going. Yeah. The oceans are in real trouble. Uh, the wild fish harvests are static. They're not going to increase. A lot of species have been fished out. Uh, we've got to learn how to farm the ocean. To find out more about how overfishing is affecting La Paz, we tracked down a local marine ecologist and activist, Alberto Guillem Gadarama. He works with Sea-Watch, a conservation NGO, and wanted to show us the local fish market. Antes, el tamaño del pez era más grande. Ahora, cada vez son más pequeños. What's this? Mantarraya. No es permitida. Okay. It's a problem, mm. really a problem. Okay. But in the in the La Paz is very de demand in the people, in the people. Because why? It tastes good. Mm -hmm. It tastes good. That's unfortunate for the manta ray. Vivo aquí desde hace 22 años 
y he trabajado con gente que vive de la pesca y sé lo difícil que es para ellos conseguir el dinero a través de la pesca. El pescado cerca de La Paz se termina, cada vez tienen que ir más lejos por el pescado. About six years ago, a new, much more devastating method of mass killing was introduced that has totally stripped the reefs between La Paz and Loreto of the larger reef fish not already caught in the nets. This method utilizes hooker divers working at night with spear guns. These divers are called pistoleros. With a simple hose pipe and air compressor, these pistoleros can spend up to eight hours underwater at a time. Que acaban, acaban con todo. El, el, el impacto es que limpian, van limpiando zonas. Cuando hay más pistoleros, menos tiempo dan a que se recupere. Pero si no dejamos que se recupere, o si tiempo atrás capturamos todos los juveniles, Próximos seis meses no hay más pescado. He conocido negocios, o bueno, personas que tenían negocios de buceo y cerraron porque ya no había nada que ver. Este año, el torneo de dorado, no hubo dorado. Legendary ocean explorer Jacques Cousteau once described the Sea of Cortez as the aquarium of the world. But that wave has since broken. The marine life, fishing boats and tourists have all but vanished, leaving La Paz feeling like an abandoned theme park. But with the end of an era comes the start of the next. Steve and his team hope that with their aquapods, farming the ocean might offer a lifeline for fishing communities and reef ecologies facing a similar fate. We've come down to try and find a hatchery that Steve hopes one day will be producing the little fingerlings, which they will then seed those big aquapods with, and that's really going to close the loop and hopefully make their operation totally sustainable. security. These warm water species grow a lot quicker. They're active year round. You're not affected so much by water temperature. And I think that's where a lot of the future in aquaculture is going to happen with this warm water marine species that we're experimenting with now. This is basically a stud farm for, for fish. These are, the, these are the happiest fish in La Paz right now, are they? Yeah. Once abundant in the Sea of Cortez, these endemic totoba are now critically endangered. These guys are priceless for us. So our idea is produce commercially and eventually help with stock enhancement. Once mature, each of these broodstock can produce in excess of three million eggs. We need half of that for production and the other half we can do a trade-off, wow. release them back in the wild. Wow. Mm -hmm. Restock it. Restock it. Wow. wow. We've got to learn how to farm the ocean. And we've got to learn how to do it in a way that, that goes beyond sustainable. I really think about restorative. How can we restore the wild stocks in the ocean? And the, one of the ways to do that is to take the pressure off by farming the fish. You know, I, I love diving. You know, I, I love getting in there with the fish. And I think the farmer always has to be in with the animals at some point. It's, it's kind of a magical feeling. I, I always imagine a cathedral, you know, with the, the big arching roof up above you. And human beings changed from hunter-gatherers to farmers 5,000 years ago on land. That same transition is going to happen in several generations in the, in the ocean. That, uh, that's going to change fisheries forever.